Hi, it's Mr Dobson here. I'm going to talk you through a potential opportunity to do construction at Key Stage 4. Uh, as you can see, it's a Level 1, 2 vocational award in construction, and it's designed for those students who want to learn about construction in a more sort of practical, practical environment. Um, it's going to provide you with a broad range of, of different trades, different skills uh, that fit into the construction sector. And we'll talk about a bit so, some of the opportunities you can get and some of the career pathways. So, as I mentioned on the previous slide, uh, construction is actually a vocational course, and it's really, uh, really important that you understand the difference between the two. So, on this sort of uh, PowerPoint here, again across the middle here, you've got your sort of traditional GCSE sort of new scores from one to nine. Uh, again, a construction course consists of the, these sort of slightly different levels. So you can see this level one pass, which is the one in red at the moment, that will be equivalent to you getting a, a GCSE pass of either a, a one to three grade in the new system. Uh, ideally, we're looking for all students to get at least a minimum level two pass, and that sort of equates to your sort of four or five uh, at, at GCSE. Again, this idea that you can also get a level two merit, which again is equivalent to your, your sort of level six at GCSE, pushing into your level seven. And you can also get a level two distinction, which is sort of getting towards the highest grade, which is again is is the sort of uh, high level eight, high level seven, sorry, up to your level eight. You can also achieve a level two distinction star, so that's equivalent to your level nine at GCC. Uh, to get that distinction star, you would actually have to get a level two distinction in all three of your units. So if you got a level two, uh, a level two distinction in your unit one exam, you got a level two distinction in your practical exam, and then you've got a level two distinction in your unit three, you would be awarded a level two distinction star overall. So again, you can get the full range of marks from, from one to nine, but again, it's important to know that it's an equivalent vocational course, hence why it's called this level one or two vocational. Okay, as you can see from this slide here, it talks us through how the construction course is actually set up. Uh, it's made up of three mandatory units, or three units that you've got to complete. First one being this safety and security. Uh, that's actually a, an online exam. It's worth 25% of your overall grade. You've then got unit two, which is developing the construction skills. Again, that's worth 50% of your final grade. And that's your practical exam, if you like. And again, you can see on the right hand side, some examples of the sort of projects that you might be asked to do as part of that uh, exam. So you can see there's a range of woodwork, brickwork, plastering, et cetera, tasks there. And then our final unit is unit three, which is planning construction projects. Again, that's worth 25%. And again, that's another online exam that we tend to sit at the end of year 11. Uh, on this slide, you can see some of the projects that we uh, undertake in year 10. Uh, we tend to start off with some basic sort of joinery skills. So we look at uh, a couple of little different wood joints, just getting to using all the tools and equipment. We've then got a mortise and tenon. We do a little photo frame. From that, we then tend to uh, to do a, a more sort of commercial based project. So a project that you can actually uh, sell on, that type of thing. So we've done bird boxes, planters, bird tables, as you can see there. Uh, again, on this slide, when the uh, when the weather's good at Peniston, we then venture outside and we do our brickwork tasks. So again, you can see us practicing what we call the rack at the top there, and then going into a coin, which is a corner in in brickwork. And you can also see on that slide that we've uh, we also do the plumbing as well. So you might have done that on your taste today. Again, this is actually a one of the tasks for unit two so again it's just a continuation of your joinery skills so this one's to make a, a stud wall around a waste pipe all that type of thing and then you can see the students then had to plasterboard it you can see then we we're looking at plastering skills painting decorating obviously adding skirting boards with internal external mitres and then to a, a finished project which is the one on the uh, the top right hand side uh, we then look at electrical circuits. So we do domestic lighting circuit and a domestic ring main circuit. So again, you can see the uh, the examples of the students all there learning how to strip cables, get cables the right length, etc., etc. And on the bottom uh, series of photographs there, we also look at doing tiling. So again, you can see someone using a tile cutter there. How you actually lay the tiles onto your your finished stud wall, and then we look at how you can cut them around sockets and things like that as well.
Okay, I'm just going to go into a little bit more detail around your sort of uh, exam unit. So unit one and unit three. So as you can see here, unit one is your safety and security in construction exam. That's a 60 minute on screen exam. And we actually sit that exam at the end of year 10. So it means that you can get 25% of your course out of the way at the end of year 10. Uh, this gives us a bit of a summary of the sort of things that we need to cover on there. So basic health and safety law legislation. Uh, safety signage used in construction, the role of the health and safety executive, and then it's more about how we look at preventing risk, you know, what sort of hazards we can get on construction sites, and then the realistically, you know, the important bit is how we can minimise risk and injury on construction sites. Uh, I put a little example of the sort of style of questions that you tend to get on the exam, so you can see the this is the first question, so it's quite short, you know, short response questions there, sort of one, two marks. They then obviously build up throughout the exam paper uh, to sort of slightly longer, longer answers. And again, you can see that they quite often use these images as a start of the questions. And this is the sort of the sort of last part of the exam paper. Again, using the imagery around construction sites. And it's the idea that you then have to look at identifying the risks, you know, the potential hazards and how you would actually put in some control measures in place to prevent any injuries. So that's your unit one exam. Uh, unit three, again, we tend to do this at the end of year 11. Um, you can see here, this is more about actually understanding the first section is about understanding all the different trades. You know, what are their roles and responsibility within the construction industry? So what does an architect do? What does a bricklayer do? What does a structural engineer do? What does a planner do? All that type of thing. Um, the second part is then around actually calculating resources, calculating project costs. That type of thing, because clearly it's part of a construction course, you've got to be able to cost up these projects to make sure that you're, you're managing to make things profitable and, and getting things within budget. And then the last part is about actually sequencing and planning an actual project. So I'll show you some examples here. So this is a, a classic sort of costing exercise on the exam paper. So you've got a, a basic floor plan that you have to cost out, you know, tiles and that type of thing for, you know, some very basic uh, maths on that one. Uh, second part is again this idea of you know what what do certain uh, construction trades do? So we've got a carpet on this exam paper. What's an electrician do, etc. What are their roles and responsibility? And there's a an extension of that. You know what's bricklaying and all that type of thing. And then the final part of it is about actually planning a build. So this is you know some of the, the stages are given. You've got to assign timescales to that. And then the next section just talks about you know what sort of things might prevent a build. Uh, finishing on time, etc., etc. So I'll, uh, you can have a little look at those. So hopefully you've had a good overview of the construction course we offer at uh, Key Stage Four for uh, for students. Again, you know it's really those students who who like to learn in a practical manner. Like I say, the course is still fifty percent uh, practical based. There are those two exams that we've uh, we previously discussed. But again, you know, a lot of students really enjoy the course and do really well out of it. And we tend to have a quite high number of students who then might go on to, to potentially further the career in construction at either Barnsley College is the, the sort of local provider we've got. They do offer courses at Huddersfield uh, Kirklees College as well. And there you then might uh, specialise in one of the trades. So you might do a either level one or a level, sorry, a level two or a level three course in bricklaying, for example, or joinery or plastering. Again, you know, if, if you think that construction is going to be a, a potential subject for you at uh, options, again, you know, and you want any more information, feel free to pop down to level one and, uh, and come and speak to me or uh, email the, the options, options at peniston-gs.uk.